my kids say that I have a knack for like taking something small and turning it into something much bigger or shifting it to being something more important. And I kind of agree with them, but I also disagree. So I agree with them in that what I do is when I hear something, I don't look at it as in like, what will it mean today? Like, what is the implications for this? Where is this going? What is the intention behind it? And though it may not be the best for the kids, um, it's kind of, it's been built out of, well, because I, out of like decision-making and when I, and how I see it's the way I see the world, how I see things growing, how I see things as they fall in line, what happens? I use my experience and um, the knowledge, my knowledge that I have from, well, when I worked at the police department in the SVU unit as a therapist, you see a lot of things. And, and though I don't believe that everything will turn into something bigger, I think there's those small slippery slope things that we need to address that it's important that we get in front of or that we actually come to a decision for ourselves, how we're going to handle it, what it means, and why it's in, why it irks us. And today's podcast episode is one of those things. So you may be on the same same line as my kids saying, Tammy, you're blowing this out of proportion. This is not what I mean. Or you may be like, oh, I see what you're saying and I'm totally against this. And, you know, it could be either way. Um, it is polarizing because it's such a common phrase right now. And even my daughter, this is this is how it stemmed from my daughter using this. And it, we, she was using it in jest. She was using it in a joke. Um, and she said, well, that's just my truth, mother. And, and yes, she calls me mother, like mother, dearest mother, um, when she's happy, when she's sad, like it's, I can, I can tell from the tone of how she says mother, whether it's going to be a good day or not, but back to the phrase, it's just my truth. This is something that I hear more and more. Well, it's my truth. It's my truth. Let's just, and and I, following it down, understanding the intention behind it, and understanding my perspective and where I see things going, it irks me. It is as a believer, as a as someone like, yeah, as a Christian, I don't believe in the phrase "it's just my truth." And let me to give you before you're like. Because I, I know it's polarizing, and I know, I I know, and I'm I'm not one to make waves on purpose, but this one I feel like I kind of need to make waves a little bit. So stick with me. Hopefully, you see why I don't like that phrase, and even in joking, even in joking, I don't like that phrase. Um, so let's. So I'd like to like pull it into two things, like what it says to you and about you and what it says to the world when we use phrases like that. Okay, so let's start. It's just my truth. So what is truth? Truth, according to the dictionary, is the state or quality of being true. What is true? In accordance with fact or reality, accurate or exact. As believers, there are some things that we know are fact. God says he's the, the way, the life, the truth, right? The truth, the way, the life. He is. Um, we know that in order to be something true, it needs to be proven by multiple avenues. Like this, if we look at it scientifically, if it can be disproven, it is not truth. Okay, so let's start with that. Let's start. If it can be disproven, it's not true. It is not fact. It is not reality. What it, you're saying when you say it's just my truth is you're saying, well, this is true for me. And that inherently is not wrong. There are some things that are true for you. 
this, but how can we say it in a way that is more edifying, that's more growth mindset, that is um, more, that it allows us to open our mind to things versus close it off. Also recognize that how many times have we grown up knowing a truth? Like my daughter just did a, a science project and her, she did a model, which she did out of cake pops, which was super cute, of the geocentric solar system. The solar system that for years people believed to be true. And the geocentric means earth center. So the sun was orbiting the earth along with everything else orbiting the earth. Scientifically, that was disproven, and that's no longer true. So the guy, which I don't remember who, Copernicus? Was it Copernicus who did the, uh, who created this idea of, or founded this idea of the geocentric solar system? So at that moment, he could, he had the decision to make of uh, when, when, it was discovered that we're actually a heliocentric, a sun. We we orbit around the sun. The sun is the center of the universe, right? The S-U-N and S-O-N, just throwing that out there. But we, we look at that and he had a decision to make. Would he believe it or stick with his old thinking? And this is kind of when we say something like, well, it's just my truth. What you're saying is there's no other way it could be. I'm not willing to look at any other ways of thinking. When we say that, we're closing off the possibility for conversation. There are some truths that we are allowed to have because they are fact. Let's face it, no matter what the world says, there are two genders, male and female, when you're born. I'm going to stop there because I know there's so many, so many thoughts on that. However, science shows there is male and female. Okay, so we have that. That is, so we're allowed, we're allowed, we can grasp onto truth. But the thing is, is we need to go with, is it accurate or exact? Is it fact or reality? Is it the state or quality of being true? Like, let's look, or is it your preference? Or is it your perspective? Or is it your opinion? This is the opinion I'd like to hold is better than saying, well, this is my truth. Because when you say the word true, that means there's no other way. doesn't matter. And you either are absolutely true, you have proof, or you're not willing to look at other uh, other ways of thinking. Like there's, it's such a closed mindset there. And it's also dangerous because we get, then we start to believe that, well, if I think it's true, then it is true. And that's where I'm going to operate. And, and that can be, dangerous. That's when we put ourselves above, I mean, how many times will a Bible verse or something, um, a, your, what you know to be true about God expands as you grow, right? So you're not allowing for that expansion. You're not allowing for that shifting of um, understanding as you grow older, as you gain more experience, as you have more of a paradigm to pull from, And so what it says to the world is you're unwilling to be open. You're unwilling to shift and that you are your own mini God. What it says to you is that I don't care what other people say. I'm going to believe this no matter what. And again, if there's not facts to back it up, if it's not grounded in reality and biblical truth, then you're just, well, I don't know. I don't know how else to say this, but you're just, you're, you're not 
living in reality. So what can we say? Because it's okay to have preferences, opinions, and perspectives. In fact, we need that because it helps us grow. It's important that we understand why we have those perspectives, opinions, and um, I forgot the last one that I said. Anyway, it's important that we know why we think what we think, that we have evidence to back it up, that we can ground we have to have a truth foundation. We have to have a, a strong rock foundation for what we believe. Excuse me. Because if we don't, then it's one of those, if you, if you can't stand for something, then you fall for anything. So it's important that we do have our truth. But when you're saying it's my truth, you're saying that it doesn't matter what other people think. So instead of saying my truth, what can we say? What can we do? What can we, how can we approach this? Because you know, we're, this is something that I've run into multiple times. What's well, okay. This is Emily. That's my truth. And that's what I'm sticking to. I'm like, okay, you mean it's your perspective or it's your opinion? Because again, if there's not a factual basis for it, it can't be held as truth. It can't. So to say, okay, acknowledge your boundaries here. This is what I want to allow to affect my life. This is a, this is the foundation that I am, the lens that I'm looking through. Your perspective. We need to know your thoughts and your perspective on things. We need to know that. I love hearing other people's perspectives on things because it helps me broaden my understanding of who they are other ways of thinking and like it helps me either change and shift and help me like gives me a, a area to go do research or it solidifies my foundation because I know parts of that are are rooted in inaccurate data so when you say my truth like what are you really intending to say like and and why I I don't even like it in jest. I don't like it in true in joking because of what it has become in the world. What because that is what people grab onto is like, well, it's just my truth and that's the way it is. And it's and it's at the point now where it's well, who gets who says you get to decide what truth is? Who gets to who says you get to decide what's accurate or exact? What basis do you have? So what else, what else can we do is, and we, and we need your perspective because knowing other people's perspectives, no one has the same experience. Like no one has, you can live in the same household and still have two different experiences. Part of that is also the understanding our core motivations. We focus on different things. Our brain catches different things. We want to hear and we process and we remember and we we organize thoughts in a different way so hearing other people's perspectives on things actually can help help us move closer to truth but you have to have an open honest conversation your opinion so what do you base your opinion on how you feel in the moment do you base it on your core values? Do you base it on your base it on your priorities? Do you base it on um, your feeling or your emotion? Like your opinion's important. I sometimes it's just for you to understand where your opinion came from is crucial. Sometimes it's it's right to share. But saying it's my truth when it's really your opinion. That's apples and oranges there. That's based in accurate data or based in preference of what I, how I see it. Again, it's so important that we acknowledge our opinions, how we see it, but back it up with some hardcore data. So how can we really how can we state this? How can we, like, instead of saying 
you know, it's my truth. You can say things like, according to what I know, this is how I see it. Um, through my experience, and you can continue on, but you have to know, you know, what do we, what have we known to be true that turns out to not be? And, and it's because we don't know what we don't know. There's a lot of things like we are building a, um, in the infinite amount of things that we have going on, we decided to start a donut truck, a mini donut truck, a food truck. And we're trying to wrap this food truck. We're, we're working with a, a wrapper to create the graphics and do that. And I have learned enough that I'm like, I don't know what I don't know. Okay. What this is, this is my opinion on this. He, the person who's wrapping the truck is the expert and I can go to him and I ask him questions. It doesn't mean I'm any less knowledgeable or experienced. It's I'm acknowledging that he has expertise in this area that needs to, that needs to come to light before I make a decision. But if we've accepted it as fact, if I went in and said, okay, this is how I want it, no matter what, he would have done it but it would also not allow it to be the best product possible because there's things that he's like, have you considered? And that is such a powerful phrase. Have you considered? No, no, I haven't considered that glossy versus matte. Does, you know, it will be glossy, will be shinier. It'll also um, won't last as long. Matte will you'll have to wash it more often. Like there's, and I don't know, I'm making those up. So if you know the difference between glossy and matte, I'm not speaking out of fact here. But again, it's asking questions and getting curious instead of judgmental. This is my truth. It's just my truth. It's so judgmental because it's saying whatever is coming out of your mouth right now is false based on me. So friend, I would love for you to start considering and thinking about your boundaries. How, what do you want to affect your, your life, your decisions, your decision-making process, your perspective and your preference and your opinions. Understand how you create those because we all create them different. We all use different uh, metrics. We all use different um, experiences. How do you create what you know to be true? And what do you base it on? I truly believe that the word is an inherent word of God. The Bible is the inherent word of God and that it's true and accurate. I, I truly believe it's a living document. And I know that there's some really smart people who disagree on what different verses mean. I could take one person's thought and be like, okay, this is why, okay, like blindly say this is who I believe. I could also look at several and say, okay, what is, and then read it for myself. There's so many times we, we need to interpret things for ourselves. Now, if it goes up against what a lot of the experts say, like, let's look at the facts that they have uncovered because Again, there's a lot of things that they've dug into that I haven't. They've dug into the, the original context and the original language, which I haven't. But give yourself that freedom. Give yourself that permission to, to form an opinion, form a perspective, form a boundary around things that are important to you. Don't shut yourself and others down by saying, this is my truth. So we don't want to take, like, I've had some really good conversations with people who I disagree with. And actually I've learned a lot. Even if I just learned about why they believe what they believe and what got them to that point, 
So I know how to pray for them, or I, I can get to the point where we have an understanding of, we don't agree with each other, but we don't disagree with the logic behind it. We can now coexist because we can see the intention behind things. Don't shut people down simply because they, they disagree with you or you disagree with them. Don't limit yourself. I am a firm believer. Um, growing up, I studied a lot of religions because I wanted to know what other people thought. I wanted to know why. I wanted to know what about Mormonism or Judaism that or Buddhists that drew them to that. And I, through that, strengthened my faith in Jesus Christ. I wasn't afraid to find additional information. And, and by shutting the conversation down with, that's just what I believe, there's no other way. Nope, I don't want to hear anything else. You have to ask yourself, why? what are you afraid of? What are you afraid to hear and why? So again, instead of saying, and I, and I want to, I want to end this in a high note because I, I know, and my daughter, we, we talked about it and she's like, gosh, mom, you take everything out of context. You blow it up to being so such a big deal. And I was like, well, I was like, what you're really saying is, well, this is my opinion, mom, which that's fine. You're allowed to have opinions, but if it's not rooted in accurate or exact information and data, and it's not in accordance with facts or reality, and it's not the state or quality of being true, then it's not your truth. We get to, we get to get excited about information. And there's so much information out there. I wanna do a podcast about the information overload and what it's actually doing to us and why we feel like we're always behind because Information overload is definitely part of that problem. But the more we understand who we are, what our core values are, because when we put things through the lens of what we value, then we're able to see what is accurate, what our opinions, what our perspective, what our experience, what our boundaries. And we're able to, um, like articulate it in a way that we can be heard. Not in a judgmental way, but a this is, that's a curious, that that's interesting. Here's how I see it. And we know that the kids, there's so many times that they come to us with things that are absolute. And we know, and we were like that when we were teens, like how many absolute things did you, you would you die on that hill only to find out? that you didn't have all the information. So that is where our experience and being able to be able to come to our kids and say, okay, interesting. How did you come to that conclusion? Okay, have you considered? And again, we can learn things from our kids. I learn things from my daughter and my son all the time. I learn new meanings for words. I learn new um better way of ways of doing things there there's a lot of good things out there but when we have a closed mindset and when we're unwilling to look at facts as they unfold and i'm not talking about opinions i'm not talking about um you know just ideas i'm talking about facts as they unfold then we're actually stopping our own growth we're limiting our our impact we're not able to see who we are. And, and some of these things might be alt like might alter how we see things. And it's okay. We there's some, there's so many inventions out there that if we didn't have, we wouldn't see the world in the same way. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't see how to do things in the same way. And it's okay. Growth and information is okay. It doesn't have to be, you, you don't have to take it as truth. It is what it is, it is not true. 
all the time. So are you willing to grow? Are you willing to, to step out and see, okay, why is that? Why am I saying this is my truth? What evidence do I have? Where is the data that supports this? And it's got to be more than I just know, or I have a feeling. Feelings lie. I won't even get into that. But know that, friend, when you are open to hearing and listening to new ideas, you don't have to be scared. You don't have to be fearful that it's it's going to change the way you see things. But if it does change the way you see, if it does open your mind a little bit to at least the compassion of what got someone else to the idea that they're that they are believing, we can't actually effectively share the gospel if we don't hear what their concerns are in the first place. How does the gospel meet their needs? And it's interesting because there's many times I've asked, they're like, well, this is just my truth. I'm like, well, okay, tell me about your truth. Why, why do you believe like that? And what evidence do you have? And then we're able to walk to, well, this is just based on this experience. This is what I believe. And I'm like, how is it serving you? How is having that quote unquote truth stopping you from getting you what you want or growing in a way? And how has it been weighing heavy on you? So the idea here is don't limit yourself to opinions and perspectives and boundaries. You should have them and you should know the difference between truth and those things, but have a conversation. Allow growth, but find the truth in what you believe and then hold on to the truth. Hold on to what you know to be true because there's so many things. It, I mean, we're, we're taught to not, we're, you know, we have to renew our mind every day. We have to focus on what's good. We have to stay rooted in the Bible and, and understand that our foundations, because there's so many forces that work working against it. But it is okay because when there is truth, when it's accurate or exact in accordance with factor reality, There's nothing that can break that. When you're looking and you're trying to, because when you're trying to shine, when you're trying to share your perspective on things, a lot of times we're shut down. When you're trying to figure out why things are important to you and your values so you can act upon them, a lot of times people don't want to hear it, but you need to figure that out anyway. You need to do it anyway, because in order to shine, in order to do what God has called us to do and share what God has called us to share, to be that light on the hill, that lamp on the hill, to be that one candle that is not snuffed out. One is we need to see where the others are who are doing the same thing. But two, we we, we need to understand what is true? How did God create us? What did he say? What gifts did he give us? Who does he want us to be? And friend, we can do that in Shine. If you haven't checked out Shine, please do. I am I am super excited about this community, about where it's going, where it is, and just the fact that if we make an impact, and then the person who we impact makes an impact, and then that, and this ripple effects. And if we also, there's so many times, how many times you have a God dream or a prompting that people in your life don't understand. And you're like, but I, in, in order to be in obedience, you have to move forward. This community, non-judgmental, and will help you with wise counsel. And we will help you see, okay, how, how do your gifts and your abilities and your skills and talents, how have you been created for this moment? And we want to support you to shine because when you're shining bright and someone over there is shining bright and I'm shining bright, then the world gets brighter and brighter and brighter and we can make a bigger and bigger impact. So if you are interested, if you're curious, if you want to find out more about 
how do I create a perspective? How do I understand my perspective on things and be able to speak about it? How do I know where my opinions come from? How do I, I know what preferences I have? And even that word preferences is so loaded in the world today that we, we are worried. Like It's like, well, we don't have to be. God created us uniquely for a reason, for a purpose, for such a time as this. So let's get it. Let's figure out why and how and how we can make an impact with it. So join Shine. Go on my website, um, tamariacoaching.com, and there's a button right on the homepage. I think it's backslash Shine. I think that's what it is. Um, but join us. Come and in two weeks, we have our live um, gathering where we're going to talk about progress over perfection. We're going to dive into how perfection has been keeping us and, and we want to be so good, but it or, we don't even know what good is until we start going. How progress gets us to our goals and perfectious, perfection keeps us where we are. So we get to dive into that a little bit. And I, and I have a little bit of a different perspective that I want to share with you. And I just want to see you there. I just want you to be part of this group. And I want to help light you up. I want to help motivate and boost you up. Because when you do that, you can boost your kids up and your spouse up and your friends up and your family up and your community up. We can light up and we can really, we can really make an impact. All right, friend. Well, I, I hope I did this conversation justice. I hope that you see how there's other ways to say it and that if we don't ground what we our truth in actual truth it actually does more to harm to us and to those that we talk to than than we recognize so with that choose joy until joy chooses you see you soon